epistle for this first Sunday of Advent is taken St. Paul's letter of the Romans chapter 13 Brethren knowing the time that it is now that the hour for us to rise from sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we came to believe the night is past and the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light let us walk uh, honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and impurities not in contention and envy but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and that the gospel Dear men, according to St. Luke, chapter 21. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations by reason of the confusion of the roaring of the seas and of the waves, men withering away for fear and, and, and expectation of what shall come upon them, upon the whole world. For the powers of heaven shall be moved, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in, in, in a cloud with great power and majesty. But when these things begin to come to pass, look up and look up and, and uh, lift up your heads, because your redemption is at hand. And he and he spoke to them a similitude. See the fig tree, and all the trees, when they now shoot forth their fruit you know that summer is nigh. So you also, when you shall see these things come to pass, know <clears throat> that the kingdom of heaven of God is at hand. Amen, I say to you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, and my word shall not pass away. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Son and Father, Son of the Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> so today, the very first Sunday of Advent, <clears throat> the first day of the liturgical year, we can prepare the next four Sundays for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's representing 1,000 years between the time of the creation until the time that Christ came 2,000 years ago. And there's a double preparation, Advent. The word Advent means coming. <clears throat> prepare for the coming of our Lord. <clears throat> And ad Advent means preparing for the coming, and that there are two comings we're preparing for. One, we're remembering the coming of 2,000 years ago when our Lord Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And then there's a primary preparing we're coming for, we're coming of our Lord we're preparing for, which is Christ coming as judge. Remember that Christ is going to come to us two times. He'll come to us at the moment of our death, and he will judge us. Then he will come at the moment of the death of the entire world, and he will judge us individually again, and then he will judge the entire world. And the whole world is preparing for that judgment. And so there are two signs, two general signs of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. One, the, the, the coming of, the, of our Lord to the saint. <clears throat> Those who live their lives in accord with God's law and who follow it perfectly, as they live their, their life closer to God, they are getting closer and closer to the coming of our Lord. And so we see the sign of the coming of Christ when people live according to the law of God. But our Lord says there's another sign also, and that is the sign of sin. For the people rose up to play and to dance. When he said those words in the gospel today, he was reminding them of a particular day. When Moses was on top of a mountain, and he had been going on top of the mountain for such a long time that they thought he would not return. He had been gone for so many days. They didn't count the days, but it was precisely 40 days before he returned. But he was up there for so long, and they, they, he was not coming back. They thought he would come back in a week. He didn't come back. He'd come back in 10 days, 20 days, 30 days. He did not come back. <coughs> and so the people rose up, to play. And the Lord said, they rose up to play, and they committed fornications, and they committed all manner of sin. And what happened? Moses came. God came through Moses. And so there are two times when God comes. God comes when we are living according to his law, and he comes to say, come to me, beloved of my father. And he comes when we are violating his law. 
And he comes to say, depart from me, ye cursed with everlasting fire. And there isn't a third possibility. Because at every moment of our lives, we are either rising up to play in the matter of sin, or we are living by God. In fact, at the very end of the Gospel of St. John, it was rumored that St. John would never die because he was perfect. And St. Peter said to our Lord at the end of the Gospel of St. John, what about him? What about John? He's the beloved disciple. All the rest of us, the other 11 of us, we are all sinners. But he is a special one. He's the beloved. Is he going to die? What's he going to do? And our Lord said, he shall stay till I come. And then St. John says, because the Lord said that John shall stay until he comes, people have said that John shall never die. But the Lord did not say that John shall never die. He just said, he shall stay till I come. And John did stay till he came. When he was about 100 years old, the Lord came and took him into the kingdom of heaven. He would live longer than all of the other apostles. And, and the youngest of the apostles, but he would live longer than all the others. They were long dead before he would finally die and go into the kingdom of heaven. And he stayed until Christ came. And St. John said, because I am perfect, because I am the beloved disciple, and the Lord said, he shall stay till I come, what does that mean I will not die? And so one sign of the, of the coming of Christ is the life of the saint. Another sign of the coming of Christ is the life of the sinner. And when the whole world becomes filled with sin, and sin increases and increases and increases, we're close to the day of the coming of the Lord. Our Lord evoked this image when he said, Remember, on that day the people rose up to play, and they rose up to commit all manner of sin. Because, and why did they do this? Because, they had, because God had left, Moses left so many, so many times ago. He had been gone so long that surely he should never return. He must be dead and gone. He's buried in the mountain, and God is in the mountain, and God will not come down the mountain, and Moses will not come down the mountain. Therefore, they rose up to play. And the whole world today in 2023 is rising up to play, and they are all immersed in sin. And this is a sign that Christ is coming. He's coming. And when the Lord came, he came down the mountain, and, and, and Joshua did not understand the coming of the Lord. Joshua came down the mountain, and he heard a tumult in the distance. And Joshua said, Moses, there's a battle. We must go and fight, for our people are in danger. I hear a great tumult. I hear a great noise. And Moses said, don't run, Joshua. It is not the sound of battle. So when is it clear that God is going to come to the damned soul? When he thinks it's not the time of battle. When Mao Zedong died and went to hell after killing millions and millions and millions of people, many more than Adolf Hitler, he was lying on his deathbed and there was no hope for him. He turned to his doctor and he said, Doctor, is everything going to be okay? And the doctor said, I knew that there was no hope for Mao. I knew he had no chance, that there was nothing that medicine could do for him, and that he was going to die, and die very soon. So I told him, you're okay. You'll be fine. And Mao smiled, <coughs> and then he died. When he was told that everything would be okay, that was a moment that he met his judge. Now when you see these things come to pass, you hear not of God in the news, you don't hear of God in the, in the, in the universities, you don't hear of God in the marketplace, and you don't hear of God in the church. They speak only of social justice and soup kitchens and rights for all manner of sin. We don't hear of God. 
And we are told that it is time to rise up and play. And God is no longer a man of God of justice. He's so high in the mountain. And Moses is so long gone and so long dead. That the God of anger of the Moses and the God in the mountain. He's not going to come down. Therefore rise up and play. Get drunk. Live a life of sin. Turn to all manner of evil. Because God is far away. That is when God is going to come. Our Lord said, lift up your heads. Because you see, when the leaves are turning, you know that summer is nigh. Well, therefore, lift up your heads. Do you see the people that they don't think of God? One of the very signs that God is coming, just a few years ago, I think it was 2015 or 14, I went to the Philippines, only a few days after the greatest tsunami or the greatest hurricane recorded in history. And the hurricane killed thousands of Filipinos in a Catholic country. And the priest said, this happened because of global warming. He said, because of global warming, the, the greatest hurricane in history, which they call uh, a typhoon, the greatest recorded ever, with over 400 mile an hour winds, destroying, killing some of our people, wiping out a great part of the land of the Philippines. And they said it was because of global warming, and they didn't say it was because of God. And immediately they said, now that there is all this death, and the city of Tacloban is destroyed, and the island of Leyte is destroyed, <coughs> and parts of Iloilo are destroyed, we can get an enormous amount of money from the West. And they started to steal, and they called for money. They turned to the desire for money. They said it was global warming. And they did not think that God was coming. They didn't think that it was one of the storms prophesied in the sacred scripture that there will be great storms, great and terrible storms that will come as a sign that I am coming again. So one of the signs that God is coming, the sinner does not believe he is coming. And he is busy finding another explanation. Fabius Josephus writes about the destruction of the city of Jerusalem in 68 to 70 A.D. And it was a type of the ending of the world. Now the Jews were inside of the city and they saw chariots of fire flying around the city walls. And they saw angel flying over the city with a sword of fire, looking with great wrath upon the city of Jerusalem and swinging his sword in the heavens towards Jerusalem. And the people said, this is a sign that the angel is going to protect us. And others said, but the angel is angry. We need to flee. And all the Christians fled the city of Jerusalem. But most stayed and they said, this is a sign of our protection. And others said, it was a phenomena. It was just an, a coincidence. It was alignment of stars and light in such a way that people thought they saw an angel. It was nothing. But we are fine. The city of Jerusalem was surrounded and it was completely massacred. <coughs> They starved and ate each other. They killed each other. And it was one of the most wicked and horrible massacres and sieges that ever took place in human history. But they did not see God in it. When you see that man will experience death and not return to God. When you see that there shall be great sorrow and tribulations, but they will not repent. When you see that there's about the things are getting ready to go bad, and what do people do? There's a saying about it. I only heard about it myself only a couple of years ago. You're going to die. You are now going to pass into eternity. You have fifth stage cancer. You are about to die. You're dying with lung, uh, various kinds of diseases. You need to do things you've never done before. You need to fill your bucket. And you have to fill your bucket list. And so they have their bucket, and they fill their bucket. <laughs> And that's their bucket list. Anything but God. Anything but judgment. We know that God is nigh. Lift up your heads. He's coming. There are wise men in the 1980s on their t-shirt. 
used to have an 80s t-shirt that said, Look busy, Jesus is coming. But the fact is, when our Lord comes, he is not going to be in a good mood. When the Lord comes, he's not going to be merciful. When the Lord comes, he had better find us busy working out our salvation. And it is the day of justice. When Moses came down the mountain to give the Ten Commandments to the Jews, he had prepared so long and he had waited 40 days. The first thing he did was he took those commandments and he broke them into a million pieces. He then commanded all the Jews to drink. They took the golden calf and they melted it down and made it into a drink with gold in it. It doesn't taste very good. And he said, drink. And they were required to drink of the golden calf. And then he said, who is on the Lord's side? And he said, kill all who come not over to the Lord's side. Leave not one alive. And 30,000 were killed in one day. <coughs> it was a day of a great slaughter. When Balthazar had his highest party, when he took all of the, of the, of the vessels from the temple that were used for the Old Testament sacrifice, and he got drunk with them and used them for sacrilege, and he thought that the city of Babylon was impregnable and could not be defeated. That night he died. He thought he was the safest, but Darius the Mede passed through it under the walls of the sea, under the walls by re-diverting the river, and he passed in and killed him that very night. So there are two signs of the judgment. Those that prepare for the coming of God, and they await his coming. And those who don't believe in God, who think he's not coming, who don't believe in his judgment at all, and therefore they busy themselves with all manner of sin, they are the two signs of the coming of God. He comes. And we are reminded on the first Sunday of Advent, this is the day when we are getting ready for Dies Ire, Dies Ila. The day of wrath and the day of fire. When the, when the day of ire, the day of God's anger, when the world shall melt in fire. That is the day we're waiting for. The Diazira was written by some monk over a thousand years ago for this Sunday. Later on, it was moved to be sung at Requiem Masses, but it was originally written for this first Sunday of Advent. That the first hymn we would see at the beginning of the year is, Day of wrath and day of ire, when the world shall melt in fire. And the judge shall come to, to, to look upon us and see whether we have upon his right side or upon his left. We'll be with the beloved or we'll be with the damned. The last day is the day in which he comes also. He's judging from the first moment until the very last. And the world is getting ready to receive the judgment of God in 2023. It shall not be the final judgment because there must be a victory of Our Lady. There must be a period of peace. There must be the conversion of Russia. But it shall be the penultimate, the judgment before the final judgment. And suddenly and swiftly, our Lord Jesus Christ prophesied by divine revelation to the sinner, on the day that you least expect it, <coughs> when you are not ready, this is the day that I will come. For if you knew the moment when the thief would come in the night, you would be awake. You will watch the door. You will be prepared. But because you don't know the moment, you sleep. And at the moment you least expect, the thief comes. And behold, I am the thief in the night. But for those that love God, it is the opposite. When you see these signs, the distress of nations the roaring of the waves of false doctrine, the blowing of all manner of evil in the church and outside the church. Lift up your heads and know that your redemption is nigh, even at the doors. And so we must know our redemption is at nigh. And now is the day to behave well, to put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's not the day for anything else, because the day of judgment is at hand. And we can see the sign and those few that are just awaiting the coming of God, and those multitudes that are unjust and think not of God, both are proofs 
that God is coming, and he is coming soon. And let's lift up our heads and prepare for that day. And we'll close the day God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.